The overall goal of this video is to demonstrate an immunohistochemistry protocol for paraffin embedded tissue sections. This is accomplished by first slicing paraffin infiltrated tissue on a microtome and then mounting the sections onto charged slides. The sections are then deparaffinized and rehydrated before performing antigen unmasking to remove the crosslinks formed by fixation. Next, a specific antibody is applied to the sections to bind its target epitope prior to chromogenic staining. After dehydrating the sections, the final step is to mount the sections for microscopic analysis. Ultimately, antibodies are used to detect and analyze protein expression while maintaining the composition, cellular characteristics, and structure of native tissue. Generally, individuals new to this method will struggle because there are so many steps in the procedure and variations in each step can have an impact on staining. Cell signaling technology antibodies that are validated for immunohistochemistry are developed in-house and CST scientists have determined the optimal conditions for the use of those antibodies in that application. The IHC protocol we have optimized for formal and fixed paraffin embedded samples is detailed here so you can replicate the procedure in your lab and obtain consistent results. Demonstrating the procedure will be Jessica Simendinger, a group leader in the IHC group at CST. To begin, cut thin slices of paraffin embedded tissue on a microtome and float sections in a water bath. Next, mount the sections onto charged slides and dry overnight on the bench top. Use of charged slides helps the sections to adhere to the slide. To perform antibody staining, paraffin wax is first removed by placing the sections in three containers of fresh xylene for five minutes each. Once this step has been initiated, the samples must not be allowed to dry out at any point in the procedure as this can lead to inconsistent staining. Then, start rehydration by placing the sections in two containers of 100% ethanol for 10 minutes each. Next, place the sections in two containers of 95% ethanol for 10 minutes each. To complete the rehydration process, wash sections two times in distilled water for 5 minutes each. Antigen unmasking is the most difficult step of this protocol. CST scientists optimize the antigen unmasking conditions for each antibody and take note of these conditions. The recommended antigen unmasking protocol for each CST antibody is noted on the product datasheet to minimize the time spent on optimization. Before antibody staining can be performed, the crosslinks formed by formalin fixation must be removed. To achieve this, First, immerse slides in 10 millimolar sodium citrate buffer, pH 6.0. Next, bring the samples to a boil in a microwave using a protocol that is optimized for each laboratory's microwave make and model. It is important not to over or underheat samples as this can cause inconsistent staining results. Maintain the temperature at just below boiling point for 10 minutes. Then cool the slides on a bench top for 30 minutes. To prepare for chromogenic staining, wash sections in distilled water three times for five minutes each. Quench endogenous peroxidase activity that may lead to high background staining by placing the sections in 3% hydrogen peroxide for 10 minutes. Then, wash the sections in distilled water two times for five minutes each before washing in wash buffer for five minutes. Carefully dry the area around the sample and then use a hydrophobic pen to draw a large circle around the sample, taking care not to touch the sample. This creates a hydrophobic boundary so that a smaller volume of antibody can be used and, if desired, multiple samples on a slide can be stained with different antibodies. To prevent nonspecific binding of the antibody to the tissues, block each section with 100 to 400 microliters of blocking solution for one hour at room temperature in a humidified chamber. Following incubation, remove the blocking solution. Then, to each section, add 100 to 400 microliters of primary antibody diluted in antibody diluent. Consult the product datasheet for the recommended antibody diluent. Most CST antibodies use signal stain antibody diluent. 
incubate overnight at 4 degrees Celsius in a humidified chamber. The next day, equilibrate the signal stain boost detection reagent to room temperature. Remove the antibody solution and wash the sections in wash buffer three times for five minutes each. Cover the section with one to three drops of signal stain boost detection reagent as needed. Incubate in a humidified chamber for 30 minutes at room temperature. Then, wash the sections three times with wash buffer for five minutes each. Next, add one drop of signal stain dab chromogen concentrate to one milliliter of signal stain dab diluent and mix well before use. Apply 100 to 400 microliters of signal stain dab to each section and monitor closely by eye. 1 to 10 minutes generally provides an acceptable staining intensity. After staining, immerse the slides in distilled water. If desired, counterstain the sections with hematoxylin. This stains the cell nuclei blue, which provides a contrast to the brown color of the dab chromogen for better visualization of tissue morphology. Finally, Wash the sections in distilled water two times for five minutes each. Signal stain dab chromogen is compatible with either aqueous or non-aqueous mounting medium. If non-aqueous mounting medium is chosen, the sections must be dehydrated again prior to cover slip mounting. To begin dehydration, place the sections in two containers of 95% ethanol for 10 seconds each. Then, Place them in two containers of 100% ethanol for 10 seconds each. Finally, immerse the sections twice in xylene for 10 seconds. Next, mount the sections with cover slips using mounting medium, being careful to avoid introducing air bubbles. Allow mounting medium to set before viewing the slides on a microscope. Shown here are human lung carcinoma sections stained with the EGF receptor rabbit monoclonal antibody from CST or a competitor EGFR mouse monoclonal antibody using citrate buffer, EDTA, or pepsin for antigen unmasking. EDTA gives a superior signal for the rabbit monoclonal antibody, while pepsin gives the best signal for the competitor antibody demonstrating that different methods of antigen unmasking are required for different antibodies, even for the same target protein. Sections of human lung carcinoma were stained with Phosphostat-3 rabbit monoclonal antibody. Antigen unmasking was performed using a water bath, a microwave, or a pressure cooker. A clear increase in antibody signal is seen using the microwave and pressure cooker. Sections from human breast carcinoma were stained using Phospho-AKT rapid monoclonal antibody, and xenograft sections were stained with Phospho-EGF receptor rapid monoclonal antibody. The antibodies were diluted with either signal stain antibody diluent or TBST 5% normal goat serum. One antibody gives a better signal with signal stain antibody diluent, whereas the other shows better staining with TBST 5% normal goat serum demonstrating that diluent choice is antibody-dependent. Prostate carcinoma sections were stained for one hour, or overnight, with Phospho-4E BP1 rabbit monoclonal antibody. Increased signal can clearly be seen with overnight incubation of the antibody. For this reason, overnight staining is recommended. After watching this video, you should have a good idea of how to perform IHC in your lab using CST-validated protocols and antibodies. If you have any questions or experience any difficulties, please feel free to contact our scientists for technical support. Cell signaling technology prides itself in providing you with exceptional customer service and support. Since all of our antibodies are produced in-house, the same scientists who develop and assay these reagents are available as technical resources for our customers. These scientists can be contacted directly and will personally provide technical assistance to you, our customer.